Chaos. Thanks for joining me today, friend. Hi, thanks for having me. So um, I think I want to start by framing this conversation a little bit and why I, I've been very excited to have this conversation, as you know, and uh, want to frame a little bit about why I think um, just to sort of set the context for a lot of the questions that I'll be asking. And so that's available to us. Um, I have been doing parts work on Twitter for a while with different accounts. And one of the sort of voices that I've been exploring is uh, what I sort of refer to as my dark voice, which is different than the one most people see on my main, which is this love and light, friendly, kind, supportive personality. And um, I think of that account, I have a thread on, on main about this, about like, that's my best self. And I'm like putting my best self forward. That's like being of service to other people. And um, also that I can step into that more and more myself, like embody those personalities. So it's sort of like aspirational even that that's like, I'm sort of like uh, improving into being the best version of myself. And then there's also these other aspects of myself, including this dark voice. And that I've had an account for that for some time. And then really in the last few months, it's just been like, there's a lot more to say there. Uh, it's been sort of catalyzed and partly from circumstances in my life and partly from just really being ready to integrate and process that stuff. And it's really an open question for me, how this darkness, which I've really come to value and appreciate, um, fits in with the sort of light, kind, sweet, friendly aspects of myself. And those aspects of myself are not really at ease internally. And during this time, I've really resonated with your account and the tweets that you have, because it feels like, well, one, they really speak to the darkness. There's a lot of like really <laughs> beautiful darkness in your account, but also it feels like there's, you've, you've integrated that light as well. I can see, um, echoes of the kind of light that I have myself where it's like um, a desire to explain things and be of service and help people and wanting to reduce suffering and that sort of thing. Um, and of course, that's my read of you, which could be a projection, but um, that's... Sounds legit to me. Okay, okay. Um, I like being helpful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and you know, you and I have been corresponding during this time and, you know, sort of interacting on, on main and also on my other account. And I found that exchange really helpful, but definitely wanted to dive in deeper and be like, what is going on with this chaos guy and his tweets? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So really glad that we're doing this. And um, yeah, so maybe just to start, could you answer the question I ask everyone, which is tell me about yourself and your life and your background. And you can answer that however you like at whatever length you like. Alrighty, uh, the 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 life story, mm -hmm. um, like kid in rural Illinois, um, like parents were like kind of back to the land hippies uh, of of some kind. Um, dad was like hideously physically and verbally abusive. Uh, mom was like absolutely just lovely. Um, uh, strong relationship with my uh, grandparents on my my dad's side who live nearby, and I went to uh, to see like most most weekends. Uh, my my grandmother on that side kind of thought I was Superman, and like that has I don't know informed my kind of like some something something about me, like just like feeling that somebody like really believes in me has has you know kept me in, I don't know moving in some ways um uh, smart kid annoyingly so um like actively obnoxious about it uh like uh school was like hideous um kids like i am pro probably like uh a little more autistic than i am now and because like the way kids would turn on me like a pack of wolves uh looks just like the way one sees neurotypical kids turning on autistic kids like a pack of wolves. So, yeah. Um, parents got divorced when I was uh, around nine, um, like some bouncing around different uh, housing situations uh, there, mostly uh, 
living with mom and then like for a year with relatives in Colorado. Um, coming back like around when I was and, like, and around this time, like I'm like a, becoming a pretty depressed kid, um, just like, I don't know, miserable all the time and like insomnia. Um, <clears throat> and like when I'm 12, uh, my mom suddenly dies uh, by drunk driving her car into a hole in the ground that was there for construction and she didn't see. Um, and that just, that just kind of like crushed me into dust. Um, I was just like, like almost kind of walking catatonic for a long time. And uh, like, I don't know, there's a long, like, I, I think I was already, already like suicidal on a daily basis before that, uh, but that definitely, you know, cemented it real well. Um, so there's like a solid decade of, of suicidality there and, and whatnot. Um, so being a teenager was not entirely the best. Um, though things like things, they started getting better when I got toward high school. Um, high school was like a, an improvement on on middle school for me in a, in a lot of ways. And like I uh, I started calling uh, BBSs. Uh, which was, you know, our, what we had uh, for an internet these days. I mean, the internet was out there. I actually went up, I, I called a, a free net node uh, a couple of times. We couldn't figure out what the hell to do with it. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and, you know, that, that got me some like, you know, sociality that was otherwise completely absent in my life. That and uh, my grandmother um, bringing me to Unitarian Universalist youth groups. So like, you know, uh, Hey, you know, shout out to the to the UUs there. Um, you're extremely lovely people. Um, <clears throat> but uh, and like, you know, junior and senior year of high school, like, and like I, I got into like the Chicago punk scene uh, through the BBS uh, BBSs and whatnot, and like started going to like punk shows on the north side of Chicago. And that was all, you know, lovely. Um, but, uh, and it, yeah, like I was, I'm like living with, with uh, different sets of foster parents and, and relatives uh, and often like, you know, various of them are like, you know, like somebody, like I got, I got bounced out of my great and grand uncles because I was like such a just, you know, miserable, unpleasant, depressed kid that like they decided that I must be on drugs, even though like I hadn't touched a goddamn thing at that point, which was, which is, you know, is, is, is legitimately strange because like my, my, you know, back to the land hippie dad, like mostly couldn't be bothered to, to like work a job or anything. Like my mom worked at the, the Kroger, but he mostly just like raised marijuana down the train tracks. Um, and like, you know, people were always like smoking weed around me and like my, my little brother, rest his soul and uh, wound up diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia one later. Um, he started smoking weed when he was five because he wanted to be just like dad. And like, I'm pretty sure that fucked him up. Hmm. Um, but, but yeah, but like, you know, I was on uh, you know, high school there for, for a second. But like, yeah, my, my last set of foster parents were really good. And like, uh, I, was, I was, you know, doing all right in, in uh, the, as, as like the little, the little punkling of my, my high school. Um, and uh, the um, between my my some contributions from my other grandmother and like that side of foster parents actually putting away some of my mom's uh, SSI money uh, that they were getting for for fostering me like you know, away from me, um, I, you know, I got to go to uh, brick and mortar college for a little while. That was uh, you know another kind of like step up in the the quality of the quality of my life experience there um right like in somewhere somewhere in, around in here like um i went from like as, as a teenager um i was you know like if if reddit had been around i would have been a redditor um i was i was like i had that that like uh like 
overweening, arrogant, new atheist kind of kind of uh, like materialist bent. Um, and like, for whatever reason, um, you know, it's, it's like impossible to place rereading it. But reading uh, Philip K. Dick book, Philip K. Dick's book *Ubik*, uh, just like unzipped my brain and and you know sewed it back up. Uh, and like I, uh, I don't know, de developed a, an interest in in uh, you know weird shit. Um, Yeah. And uh, going to going to college, uh, you know, I started uh, expanding on that and you know, like hanging around out around the, the little we occultists and, and whatnot, and like who are very silly people and I love them very much. Um, <laughs> but going to college, like you know, I, I you know got on the internet for real and like encountered uh, muds, um, which you know I don't know how many people even know what that is. Mud originally stood for multi-user dungeon. And this, you know, did not necessarily refer to a dungeon in general. It referred to dungeon, the uh, I think, what was it, the VMS port of uh, uh, Colossal Cave Adventure. Mm -hmm. um, wait, was it Zork? I don't know. One of those. The the, the old school text adventures. Um, it was and like little text based multiplayer games where you you know you run around and you you know beat up goblins and and, and so forth. And uh, that was kind of like what I had been waiting for all my life. And I like dove into that and like, you know, definitely did not get very good grades in college because I was too busy coding on MUDs, um, which uh, that wound up being something like one of them, uh, Lost Souls, uh, which is still running lostsouls.org that you know, I'm not actively involved with anymore. Um, you know, I, I worked on that for upwards of 20 years. Um, and uh, I don't know. Learned a lot. Um, definitely, like you know, honed my my uh, my coding because um, like I'm, you know, I I've, I've been uh, very into you know, computers and video games and you know what what programming I could uh, get my hands on since being like uh, I, since being a little kid even. Um, but uh, going to college. Um, Let's see. I mean, you know, started like uh, having like actual relationships with women and whatnot, um, which like you know, didn't really start working out in high school. Um, like some kind of abortive attempts that like weren't very weren't, weren't anything to write home about. Um, but uh, so basically, when um, when the, the money ran out for me to be uh, going to college after like two and a half semesters, I was like, okay, like, well, there's this woman in New Jersey who wants to me to move in with her. Uh, I, I guess that's what's happening next. Um, and then, you know, unfortunate sort of uh, passivity about uh, like, you know, what the universe is putting in front of me, kind of a, a symptom of long-term depression there, I think. But uh, so, you know, I, I, I went ahead with that and uh, uh, landed in uh, my first wife's mother's basement with her uh, in, in New Jersey. Um, all sorts of adventures in, ensued from there. Um, started a, a mom and pop ISP, internet service provider, and it started with you know, back when like having a modem bank was a, a thing that you could actually like do and was anything that was useful to anybody. Um, like descended into some some like uh, fairly horrific forms of of madness there, and wound up like just violently exploding my life. Um, that entire you know uh, you know relationship no longer exists, and life situation no longer exists. Um, like putting myself back together uh, after that, um, like still hanging around New Jersey, um, like kind of mostly like not dealing with uh, people from my, my life previously. Um, like 
started working for uh, software companies in, in Manhattan. Uh, somehow I, I always centered around 23rd Street, so, you know, Hill Eras. Um, and I uh, met uh, my, my present wife, uh, Jennifer, uh, at Jen Failion. Um, she's the one who, who dragged me kicking and screaming onto Twitter. Uh, <laughs> My, uh, my original conception of Twitter was uh, actually very similar to the founders of Twitter's conception of it, where it's something where you'd be like, you know, oh, I had some lovely oatmeal for breakfast. This <laughs> like this kind of like, you know, incredibly <laughs> tedious life log. Um, <laughs> and she was like, no, no, it's not, it's not really like that. Like, you'll, 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 you'll be into it. And I'm like, oh, like, you know, okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, yeah, it turn, turns out you can use it. Uh, a good bit better than it was conceived of being as yes, being used for. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, I don't know. Stuff move, moves moves forward smoothly from there. Uh, met my uh, girlfriend L, um, who and I. You know, I'm polyamorous. Uh, I've never been in a monogamous relationship uh, that, you know, uh, Robert Heinlein uh, did a good number on me back when I was in my uh, Redditor phase, uh, mm -hmm. my, my teens. And it's like, you know, oh, like, yes, this, this is, you know, this is what I'm like. Um, and uh, met, met Elle on, uh, you know, she kind of hunted me down on, on Twitter. Uh, so that, that was, that was lovely. Um, she uh, moved in with me like just under the wire before COVID happened, um, which uh, is nice because um, actually uh, Jennifer and I, Jen, Jen like lived with me around here for like four or five years, um, but was like like having annoyances with the, the local job market and uh, her, her friend had a, uh, a job lined up for her back in the city she, she's from, Minneapolis, and she was like, you know, I kind of want to go do this and like, you know, maybe hang out with the, uh, the other boyfriend you got me that uh, lives in, in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, okay, cool. So, you know, I don't actually live with my wife presently. I'm, I'm working on uh, uh, getting out there in the extremely near future though. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I don't know. Um, okay, I mean, that, you know, brings us vaguely present-ish. Uh, any, uh, I don't know, interesting uh, inflection points you'd be interested in hearing more about? Or? Yeah, it's very interesting background. And there's a lot that um, uh, sort of echoed for me in there of like, oh, very different life story. And it's some interesting similarities as well. Like just uh, the most banal one is like, I grew up in the Unitarian Universalist Church. I was like, oh, that's oh. interesting. Like, hello, yeah. nice to see your friend. <laughs> uh, did you yeah. have why are you you in your day? Uh, I think we did. I think we did. I think I didn't make it to that because I, oh. I stopped going when I was like in the sixth grade. So I think I didn't, anyway. Oh, you're, you were just right before you would have been in. Yeah, in yeah. Like, um but uh that was definitely very i think it, in i mean i've yeah i think in some ways i'm just like oh never mind this buddhism stuff or this taoism <laughs> stuff like i'm still a uu i can't, can't escape my childhood religion dogmatic oh, as it is okay. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, no, you know, you know, yeah unitarians are so dogmatic uh, so dogmatic <laughs> <laughs> the most fascist dogmatic religion of all time <laughs> yeah yeah with the, with the big uu pagan uh, uh caucus and, and whatnot yes uh <laughs> uh yeah but i think um maybe so one thing to ask about is just sort of a factual question but when you started using twitter was that with your chaos prime account or a different account or uh what, what yeah, was the chaos prime. okay cool um so like you know you can you can go back into like you know really old tweets for me and like see how bad I was at it. Okay, uh, okay, yeah. might have to do that. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's extremely humiliating. Yeah. Well, it's probably <laughs> cute from my perspective. I don't know. I look at my old tweets. I have tweets from like two thousand eight or seven or something or whatever, and those yeah I experienced those as humiliating, but I think they're sort of endearing. Uh, yeah. um, what? 
let's see I'm, how to phrase this question. So you early on in life had a phase of kind of like this materialistic atheist worldview, and then that got sort of borked by reading the Philip K. Dick book that you mentioned. What? Yeah. How would you? And, and like I'm, I'm, I'm still a, a hardcore materialist. I'm just not a basic one anymore. Ah, say more about that. What does that mean? <laughs> um, like. I think that spirit is what matter does. Um, like I, you know, the, I, I, <clears throat> I'm a non-dualist of substances. Um, I like, I don't think that there are uh, two like things interacting and or opposing each other in our, our you know, basic, basic, uh, you know, constitution. Um, I, I think that the, you know, the thing, the things that have spiritual character are emergent properties of the, you know, the, the matter. Um, mm -hmm. And like that, the, you know, that in no way makes them like useless or uninteresting the way your, you know, uh, Reddit atheist uh, seems to, to consider. Um, but like it, seems to me to, to, to make them somewhat other in character to like the way a lot of, uh, you know, people of a spiritual bent uh, desire to, to engage with them. And like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, I kind of always enjoy like talking with people a little by being very technical about spirituality. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, like, I, I mean, I guess that's kind of a, you know, an occultist trait in general. And then like, you know, back when I first got on the internet, I, I gravitated toward alt dot magic with a K, um, and we, we always had uh, this this you know entertaining little kind of rivalry with alt dot pagan, uh, and like you know to to us they they were the the like you know uh, crystal bunnies uh, feathers of spiritual light kind of kind of people, and you know to to them we were the you know the jerk ass uh, like you know evil occultists, uh -huh. you know just wanna be mean to them all the time. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a fun little thing. Yeah. It's nice. And, you know, we don't, we don't value rivalries enough anymore. It's unfortunate. Hmm. 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 How would you describe your views about spirituality at this time? Um, well, I, I wonder what an answer to that question would look like. Um, yeah, I mean, because, uh, I mean, so for myself, the, the easy answer, the sort of like hand wavy answer is like, oh, you're a Buddhist. But it's like, oh, well, probably you should stir some Taoism and some Peace Pilgrim in there. And that's mm -hmm. like, oh, and, you know, I grew up Unitarian Universalist. Like, that's, that's like 60% of the way to the answer. And then when I sort of try to do a mental model of whatever it is that you're on about, which we'll <laughs> go into great detail in this conversation about, it's like, okay, so m m m like non-naive materialist gets like, feels like a pretty foundational part of it, but not, not the whole of the thing. And we can go into yeah. some of the specifics. I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of like, yeah, that's, that's like where I'm, where I'm kind of like, you know, trying to start from and, and like, you know, have foundationally, but you know, one, one thing that's un unfortunate is that I've, I've found my way to, to like, you know, working guesses about what the fuck is going on that like are so fucking weird that like they're you know the the operational distinguishment between them and like just a you know dual substance you know supernaturalist uh, spirituality is like vanishingly small and it's very annoying to me uh but i'm like no no i'm i'm still talking about stuff it's just really fucking weird stuff mm -hmm. um yeah, um, I feel like it, like in, in a lot of ways, like my my fundamental like spiritual orientation is a a decently strong match for like David Chapman's concept of what a tantrica is. Um, like when I first read his uh, uh, like Charnel Ground and Pure Land essays, I was like, oh, like this. This is what I've been trying to fucking you know put together out of, you know, like random scrap lying on the street uh, for, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. I'm now really annoyed that, you know, in my background as an occultist, like, you know, Tantra was always like just code for like 
you know, kind of fluffy sex magic stuff. Um, you know, the, the urban tantra movement in the United States, you know, I, I blame a great deal for that. Like, like, oh, like actually tantric sex is, you know, completely incon inconsequential compared to tantric mindset. Like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, yes, all right, like, thanks. Thanks for, thanks for let, eventually letting me know. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. That makes uh, sense. Yeah. Um, maybe, you know, you were talking about like, sort of trying to figure out what's going on and coming to very strange answers and, um, only when you start when you start getting into my tweets, that'll definitely uh, you know there'll there'll be plenty of stuff to. <laughs> yeah, I was reminded of one in particular, and and I'll probably do this quite a bit of like literally quote you because they're they're sure. sort of like high density tweets. But I was reminded of um, this one from last year where you said you can learn a lot about God that priests, rabbis, and ministers don't want you to know by contemplating. One given a factor that determines everything. It is impossible not to be in service to it. And two, to what kind of priorities would every act you observe be in service? Um, and then and then after that, as a reply, you said, um, I'll, I'll just quote this now so it's available. My best current vague feeling is that it, uh, I think the universe here, is yeah. a desperate search operation in a very high dimension parameter space looking for a particular class of information artifact to address some crisis, but yes, those operations serve at Peachy Keen. Um, um, wh what, like, so, so we may want to get into some of the specifics of that answer, but the question I'd like to start asking is just like, what prompted you to do this sort of inquiry about what the universe is and how have you gone about that, like broad strokes? Hmm. Well, Definitely a lot of it is coming out of my background as a uh, multiplayer online game developer. Um, like as, as someone who like attempts in a very haphazard, half-assed way to create worlds. Um, and like, you know, this, you know, seems, you know, it seems to naturally lead me to uh, trying to attempt to holographically approximate the mind state of God, uh, mm -hmm. like, you know, and then, and there's, you know, the, the shoemaker will tell you about how, you know, God is like a shoemaker and, you know, the, the carpenter will tell you about how God is like a carpenter and so on. Um, like, you know, if, if you're, if you're trying to create worlds, it seems like kind of fucking inescapable, uh, but, um, you know, the, the, and that, you know, I don't know, feeding into my you know, overall interest in, in uh, just trying to figure out what the hell is, is going on and, and so forth. Um, so here you are, you're, you're, you are a being, you are alive, you also mm -hmm. happen to be a game developer, you make yes. your own worlds as a profession, and you are positing, well, there's this universe, maybe there is some creator or some intention or some structure, yeah. what can I work out about what's happening from right. what I see? So like, you know, if, if, there, if there were a purpose or intention to that, like what kind of purpose or intention could be served by the kind of thing that I'm, that I'm seeing myself in? Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, so that, I think that that gets at like maybe half of this part of what I want to know, which is uh, like, what is the operation that you're doing? And then the interesting thing besides that is like, it seems like you come to maybe, maybe to me, to my apparently like pretty different answers of what is going on. Than, I mean, as you say, then like priests, rabbis, and ministers don't want you to know. Um, like, and, and you know, you don't often bump into theology that's like, oh, it's a, the universe is a, is a desperate search operation. You know, like that's <laughs> an interesting way of putting it. Um, yeah. What kinds of things, um, yeah, like, I mean, you said like, what would every act you observe be in service of? And what are some of the phenomena that you're accounting for that lead to such 
a different answer about what the universe is? Um, well, one thing is, um, you know, and, and all, you know, plenty of people have, have made, you know, uh, indications and done explorations of this, but one is that like, all the stuff that we look at and say, oh, that's not God, that's the devil. Like that's, you know, you know, nothing, you know, if, if, if there's a, a you know, a God that is a, you know, the, a prime mover that is, you know, determining the universe, like it's all God. Like, you know, the, the devil is just, you know, when you're looking at what God is doing and you don't like it mm -hmm. uh, or like, uh, random people's random quotations on this, you know, devil is the God found out. Um, Joseph Campbell's book, Creative Mythology, um, is basically like, an, an, it's a uh, anagogical exercise that, uh, you know, is there to leading you to, you know, seeing, uh, you know, uh, God in the, the whole thing. Um, and uh, so, you know, given that like every, Everything that anybody would identify as a rebellion, rebellion against or defiance of God is also in, in service of God, given that every form of suffering that we would consider something, you know, not desirous to God, and I, I, and I think that is likely to be accurate, um, is also in service to God, like, you know, like, what kind of, of, of thing would be happening that that would be the case. I can um, imagine some things, but can you say explicitly some things that you might be accounting for along those lines? Um, well, it, it, another like strongly relevant tweet of mine is the, the one about the, the escaping from local maxima or, mm -hmm. you know, yes. or local, local minima if, if one wishes to, you know, use what it, you know, the, is normally the, the, the technical inflection of the, the thing. Um, Maybe I should read that real quick because that's, I mean, I sure. think that's my personal favorite of your tweets that I've had of many <laughs> excellent ones. So uh, I keep re-encountering with a shock the way that most people do not know at all that the problem the entire universe is devoted to, that it crashes us into walls, throws us off cliffs, tortures and murders us to try to solve, is that of escaping local maxima. Yep. Um, that is it seeming to me that, like what, what, is, what is being sought there is exploration of phase space. Um, and I, I should, okay, I, I should, sketch the concept of phase space real quick, where um, basically phase space is a, a modeling technique where any given system, you can pick uh, ways in which it varies. And each of those is a, a, an axis on your, your phase graph. Um, and you know, whatever the, the state of the system is on that measure, whether it's like you know, temperature, whether, whether it's, it's you know, position in a physical arrangement, um, like whatever kind of, of uh, behavior, electrical charge, you know, yada, yada. Um, and uh, you, can, you can often find interesting things by uh, you know, tracking the, uh, the phase trajectory of the, the system through different conditions. And that was how a lot of the uh, early interesting discoveries of chaos theory were made. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, it, it, it seems to me that, uh, it, that the universe acts like a mission to explore uh, you know, possibilities in that, in that kind of space, uh, to, for building platforms, uh, for accessing uh, like realms of possibility that were you know, not previously accessible. Um, and like, there's a there's a complex uh, like dynamic tension with uh, with life it, itself, and that and it, like life largely tries not to do that, but but is forced to do it anyway by by its circumstances, um, and that that uh, like counter tension you know itself like why because it, it, the counter tension itself winds up being a mechanism of of uh, exploring. Uh, exploring possibilities um, because like the, even the attempt to remain the same in changing circumstances uh, is branching out in uh, kind of a kind of space. Um, and if I were, and where the, the, the concept of the, the desperate search operation comes from um, is that uh, the idea of, of <clears throat> So if you were running a, a big old universe uh, 
that was characterized by by this this kind of like churn of possibility. Um, like what what would you be doing for that? And you know, it re resembles uh, to me a, a search operation um, in uh, you know uh, graph theory, um, where you're you know you're 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 looking for for something, um, and you know, you're uh, burning through the permutations of uh, a parameter space in some way, trying to to find that. What you described the thing that the search operation for is a particular class of information artifact to address some crisis. Can you say more about what that means? Like, what what is the universe looking for if it is a search operation? Yeah, I mean, like, I'm I'm way the hell off in, in speculation land here, though. Mm -hmm. But like, um, I I, I mean. It could be fucking fucking anything, and like it, you know, it's it's a very like kind of vague thing to me at this point. But I I, I feel like when we um, when we have like certain kinds of 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 like epiphanies, uh, you know, moments like that that we're like maybe maybe approximating those or maybe just like locating them. That like there's you know, like some kind of of like configuration of ideas or like physical substrates of ideas uh, that's being sought for, you know, addressing a humanitarian, humanitarian crisis or like trying to like find out how to arrange a world so that like it doesn't like spiral down the toilet um, or like trying to devise better mimetic weapons to, you know, win a fucking war in heaven with, um, mm -hmm. what have you. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I thought at earlier it sounded a little bit like something like the, the universe desires complexity and increased uh, levels of consciousness or something like that, and like is willing to cause suffering or have like difficult experiences or even evil in order to like create the conditions where increased complexity could arise or something like that yeah it's a lot like that mm -hmm. i don't think it's even necessarily the complexity itself i think the complexity like can potentially like be disposed with a lot of the time um like it, it might in a lot of circumstances just be a bridge to to a different kind of different kind of environment a uh, different kind of you know set of things going on um but the the, the uh you know but it's probably always going to be like needed as a, a bridge to to new spaces after old spaces have been you know explored thoroughly mm -hmm. So if you see the universe as a search operation, what does that entail for you as an individual or for any other individual? Um, it feels to me like it entails that if I, if I want to be helpful to it, which like, you know, seems like a you know reasonable thing to do but like not really an obligation um that like it's you know uh trying different things and like you know living and growing and and you know expanding my life and life in general is is useful to that um like and then you know i mean that goes to my you know my bio you know cognitive arms dealer like um i i feel like adding capability to people like you know getting them unstuck is you know service to that um i think it's it's also like you can't really not do service there um because like, you're already in the system you are the system yeah you know 
and like really like yeah you're you know I mean and you know this is, this feels like Zogchen to me um, like whatever you're doing is is, is good like mm -hmm. you're you're you know you're doing what you should be. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> That seems like it would open up a really different view on ethics where like you can't do wrong really not to the you know not to the concerns of the universe uh -huh. um, like <clears throat> yeah because <clears throat> like the unfortunate thing is that like all the, you know, the kinds of hell realms that we have and will be uh, driving ourselves into, like, those are also valid, uh, you know, expansions of the, of the search space. Mm -hmm. uh, and <clears throat> I think, I, I, you know, another, another one of my, one of my tweets that you were quoting there, um, the, uh, um if you had made some people one mm -hmm. i can read that uh, if that's helpful yeah sure go for it if you had made some people and you knew they would eventually occupy every state they possibly could including those of the most abject misery it'd be kind to tell them what would keep them from those states as long as possible maybe enough to keep your heart from breaking yeah and uh <clears throat> that's basically you know positing that maybe the the existence of uh, you know, major religions and whatnot uh, represents like a little, a little ameliatory uh, uh, tidbit from from God, saying like, like yeah, you're you're going to spend you know all the time in all of the hell realms, but like here's a little something where you know if you stick to this like you'll have nicer times for, you know, for as long as that's a, a sustainable thing. Hmm. That's brutal. That's so brutal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny because I think um, a common reaction to like traditional theologies is like anger at God and like, why, mm. why did you make the universe like this? And that never really resonated for me. I don't know. I, I've also never been there's never been a period of my life where I was like very strongly atheist. I've sometimes found theistic views useful or helpful or like true even, but never like, oh, I identify as a theist in a persistent way or something. And, um, but my reaction to the things you're saying is much more like the reaction that, you know, you might have to just have like, oh, I don't, I didn't sign up for that. Like, no, God, yeah. like, why yeah. am I, I don't want to be in this game that you made. <laughs> like, this is a shitty game. Like, fuck that. <laughs> Uh, like if that's what it is I don't know it, and I, I don't experience that in my normal day-to-day -day life exactly but like hearing you talk about it, I'm like oh oh that's that's interesting because like you know this is kind of like you know to me it's it it, it remedies the the issue of theodicy <laughs> there in some way where uh -huh. like um yeah we're um but yeah it's 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 definitely like in that space and 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 pretty rough and it's is it's, it's basically like positing, you know, uh, a God that like, you know, doesn't, you know, fucking want you to like, to like have to like be in every, you know, hell state imaginable. Um, but like, but that's the exercise. Like that's like in order to do what the whole fucking thing is here for, like, that has to happen mm -hmm. um, and like, and you wouldn't exist if that purpose weren't being served. Right. So. Yeah. Um, there's a few, a few pieces of this that like, it's, it's, it's hard for me to see how they fit together. Um, a few like multiple sides of this, but the search operation part seems pretty clear. Maybe not what's being sought for, but like, yeah. it is a search operation i'm like okay I can, I can like roll with that um that 
Yeah, I think one of the components that's not fitting is um, you said um, there are two tweets that you have that I'll read now about the universe being perfect. So mm. the first is the world is absolutely perfect and does not need to be changed in any way. And part of its perfection is our perception that it is fucked up and our resulting efforts to change it. And then you also said, uh, this is a mantra, <laughs> an unusual mantra. The universe is an intrinsically perfect four-dimensional object in which everything has happened, is happening, and will have been happen happened exactly as it should and must. And so, yeah, like, wh why is the universe... Yeah, like if it, if it's a search operation, how is it perfect? Like that, like because a search operation seems like active and like yeah, I mean you, you even called it a desperate search operation where it's like looking yeah. for this thing. Um, it even seemed it almost sounded like kind of like tragic the way you're describing it, but you're like oh, it's also perfect. Yeah, it kind of it kind of feels tragic to me. Um, and yeah, I mean I don't I don't know that I have a good reconciliation for that. It's basically just like. Um, Like when I'm hmm, the you know intrinsically perfect four dimensional object kind of perspective is um, like basically something that you know if you're you're not worrying about conceptions of, of free will and like <clears throat> viewing processes as as deterministic um, and like the dimension of, of time as like an, an extent rather than like a uh, like chewing through something and it's gone like you can you can view the universe that way and I you know I find it kind of kind of restful too um, like to and you know it's 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 pleasant to like and i and i think productive to view like things that have that have happened that have uh you know been good in whatever way as like that they're like always there um like it's i i think we make a lot of unpleasantness and loss for ourselves by like crying about things having ended instead of celebrating that they haven't. Um, and I'm not certain how valid that perspective is in, in some like, you know, hard sense, uh, because I'm like, still, still kind of trying to figure out time. Um, the, the, what the fuck is going on with time anyway? Um, it's, it, it, it more feels like it's, it's kind of a, it feels like a simplification that is accurate enough to be meaningful, um, doesn't necessarily encompass everything. And like the search operation doesn't have to be Doesn't have to be other than deterministic to be to be desperate, um, like I guess the the, the characterization of desperate uh, feels like it comes from the uh, the apparent need to expand into spaces regardless of their you know affective valence. what what are you noticing about time that makes you want to 
learn more about it like what 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 is fucked up about time that you're trying to work out hmm. well time like metrics don't seem to be exactly like space like metrics uh like moving back and forth in them uh doesn't doesn't seem to be uh exactly a thing um <clears throat> You know, there's there's the there's stuff coming out of uh, physics about the idea that that uh, perception of time is is uh, like a an epiphenomenon of the entropy gradient of the universe. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to oh. <clears throat> Hmm. Some of, some of this I don't know, to, to 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 talk freely about uh, some of the, the the weird perspectives I'm trying to process about this. I should probably like <clears throat> say say one or two things about the. Uh, you probably have some other tweets that are that are addressing things around like uh, consciousness, continuity. Uh, Atman. Yes, there's a, well, I'm not sure if this is exactly um, what you're referring to, but there's a word that you've said I, I hadn't heard before I saw it in your tweets, which is at my katva. Is at my right? katva, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, um, that shows up around like the, the Advaita Vedanta and whatnot, but it's, it's um, basically the, the, um, the, the, uh, realization of like uh, unitarian the, the unitary na nature of of Atman the the oversoul and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> well, okay. Let me let me let me tell a little uh, story about that. So, like, you know, I was chewing on on the on on issue of consciousness and whatnot, and like being like like what the what the fuck is going on with this thing? I'm like. And like my my natural inclination was always uh, uh, emergentist. I you know I, I tend to uh, be an emergentist about all kinds of, of damn things. Um, <clears throat> uh, and and like you know I had I had you know done a you know gotten a fair amount of uh, progress on what I what I what I would now think of as as uh, anata, uh, but like uh, like kind of like like peeling off things that like. People want consciousness to be that that it isn't um, that like you know people want to be their 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 thoughts and their their feelings and their choices and, and their memories and and you know all kinds of good stuff like that um, and like I you know you know, boiled down what I was trying to look at as like strictly just the existence of an experiential point of view that like you know there being something that like you know the the you know the sense data that I'm perceiving the the processing that I'm, that I'm doing of it the the sensations that I'm having that there you know that there's like if that was all stuff on a TV screen like what explains the fact fact that there's somebody watching the TV like how is it that that you know these experiences are being experienced instead of just passing through matter uh, you know un, unregarded. Um, and how the fuck would it be that like some arrangement of matter would like you know cause this experiential point of view to pop into existence? And I'm like, like thinking about it, and like this, like and like I've been, like people wave their hands about like oh like you know reach a certain level of complexity and then blah 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 and now you have content and like like you know you're just you're just like putting the then a miracle happens in the middle of the, the equation there. Um, and like, you know, like this really doesn't doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, and like in the in the, in the, the middle of my, my process uh, with, with this, um, I'm I'm sitting on a, an empty path train, the the train between uh, New York City and, and New Jersey, um, in the middle of the night, uh, waiting for it to to go from from Manhattan to to Jersey, uh, reading um, Zero H.P. Lovecraft's uh, short story, The Gig Economy. Uh, and something, something about the, the like, kind of like, you know, spookiness of, of uh, that, that piece, like, kicked off, kicked off some kind of, of, of thing in my head. And uh, 
and it, it, it occurred to me like, like kind of just like one thing after the other, um, like what if there's no sensible, <clears throat> sensible way uh, for that, that emergence that we're looking for there to happen? Um, you know, in, and it doesn't need to because, because it was always there. <clears throat> and for some reason that led directly to the thought of um, if it, you know, if it, if it was always there, if it was inherent in the, the matter, um, then could it be the, you know, the, the same one uh, in, in, in each case. Um, and like, you know, that, that did a particularly strong kind of, you know, epiphanic kind of thing in my head. Like I, I felt like I, you know, upon asking the question that I could like feel that I, that I could perceive that being the case that like, that the the experiential point of view that is having my experiences is the same one that's looped through everything else and and like not not as a not not at the same time like fucking one after the other um but not in you know not in sequence within our time frame um <clears throat> So, and so that was, was, uh, uh, you know, a lot to process. Um, and like, there, there was a, there, there was a, a feeling there, like accompanying this, this like, you know, epiphany kind of, kind of experience of like, of like some, somebody, somebody somewhere being like, you know, yeah, buddy, you got it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Like, like I was being congratulated, like, you know, good job, pat on the head. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> um, or, I mean, not, not really, it, it wasn't really condescending. It was, it was, it was like, it was more just like, it was, it was like, like kind of like proud and like, like this, like this was a success uh, mm -hmm. for, you know, the source of the, the feeling of congr congratulation too. Um, <clears throat> But, uh, and like, from, from, you know, my tattered, uh, materialist, uh, you know, like basis here, like, like, I don't like trust this experience implicitly. I, I, I feel like people trust their like spiritual, uh, I don't know. Their, their, their personal gnosis, uh, like excessively, <laughs> like I, I, you know, I, I definitely trust my, my system to, uh, generate, uh, that experience for me, uh, in the absence of any, you know, actual referentiality to reality, like better than I, you know, uh, trust everything to, to just be like that. Um, but it does seem strangely compelling to me and and definitely like matches up with you know like when i when i go talking about uh, this sort of thing people are like oh you're just cribbing from the advice of the Vedanta. i'm like okay <laughs> um but uh <clears throat> so that's that's you know the 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 concept there of you know the atman the oversoul being an, an experiential point of view that is present in inherently in in matter um and like uh, you know continue you know as in what it seemed to me is like threaded back through the universe i guess through each fundamental particle probably um a very very large number of times um and I, and what i'm what i'm trying to get at presently around uh time with regard to that is like whether you 
whether perception of time is fundamentally the the procession of that through a lattice of of matter of some kind. Um, So yeah, that's you know now and then, you know, I'm I'm definitely getting into the you know stuff that's uh, weird and hard to talk about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at this point, but but yeah, um, that is I don't know, basically what informs like any commentary I make on uh, I mean like most kind of. Buddhisty sorts of topics, uh, anything to do with reincarnation and whatnot. Like, uh, it, it, you know, from from what people say and what people have, have written down, um, it looks to me like a lot of things come from people having like uh, smacked face first into that kind of experience at some point, and. Uh, Having done different things with it, um, you know your uh, your karma or, or or garden variety uh, Buddha type of figure uh, looks to have like looked at that and seen you know this them for sufficiently you know non them values of them. Um, having every experience that is within the possibility space of the universe, um, you know, one after the other over and over again. Um, and then like, wow, that's gonna suck a lot. There's, there's like, oh, God damn. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, proceeded to um, try to promulgate teachings that will like, reduce the amount of time that they're going to spend living lives that are, you know, total fucking misery, uh, which like, you know, <clears throat> seems like, you know, pleasant enough project, you know, cool, you know, go for it. Um, and like, you know, I, I, I have like interpretations of, uh, Know, things like like the, the directions that doctrines about reincarnation and so forth have have you know gone from there and like gotten all fucked up and, and whatnot mm -hmm. like, but uh you know the the what i think of as more the the tantric perspective on it is looking at it and saying like you know i mean you know there there's there's certainly no reason not to you know try to promote pleasant dharmas and spread them around uh ones that will like you know result in people living you know agreeable lives and so forth uh you know if, if that's what you're into um but it's fundamentally going to be very ineffective uh, in the in the total scheme of things um like it's gonna it's gonna move the the suffering versus non-suffering needle like a little bit and you know that's that's not nothing and you know it's it's you know, worth making an effort for if you feel like it, but it's it's also like not the only thing you can validly choose to do in the in the circumstance. Yeah, I think you're sort of alluding to this, but one of the tweets that you had about this is each mind that comes into contact with Atmai Atmai Katva shatters differently according to its fault lines. And the major divisions among true dharmas are between those who whose communicants went more like, ah fuck, and those that went more <laughs> All right, fuck yeah, let's do this. Uh huh. Yeah. What, what's the, what's the sort of strong man for the? All right, fuck yeah, let's do this perspective. Um. I think, you know, I fundamentally like strong man that to myself, with the perspective that, if we're doing this, like. It's probably for a reason. It's probably for you know a, a pretty fucking good reason. Um, like and like 
embracing it seems like more fun than you know waiting out about it and waiting out about it is does not seem to be like effectively protective in any way so might as well embrace it i think um i'm reminded of um let's see i wrote this tweet recently the dharma is simply what is and mm. i think that i was trying to not 100 percent sure what prompted that but something that's been on my mind recently is like oh i seem to have picked up a lot of metaphysical beliefs that are quite strange and like i'm not even sure where i got them or like how that like let alone how they fit together and if i certainly if i had taken the time to list all of the metaphysical beliefs that i have like there'd be a conversation that could be had just like this one where i'm like how did you fit all of that together because i don't really i don't i don't really see how this all fits like help me out here um i haven't like, even started talking about the machine elves Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. Uh, let's like let's pray we get to that. Uh, but um, but let's see. Yeah, I think for me it it does seem pretty axiomatic of like whatever reality is, you do not want to fight it. Like you want to be in accord with it because like it it seems like maybe you can try to fight reality. Like you have the agency to try to fight it, but that like that's not going to work out so well for you or something yeah. um, so um and i'm also i'm also realizing just hearing you talk about this that um it seems like th there's maybe two roots of this sort of darkness that is present in me that is like one noticing that there is suffering right like mm -hmm. i don't know i'm in certain ways i've been like quite pleasantly free from suffering in my life not completely but like there are kinds of suffering i've experienced in recent years that i had not previously experienced and it's like okay this is this is this is new <laughs> this is bad um yeah yeah and then the second the second part is like okay well there's suffering but also like uh, like oh this is bad this is um we like a, re a rejection of it and almost and almost and almost a fighting of reality like yeah. why this should not be happening why is this happening kind of sensibilities yeah yeah it seemed seemed like you know one of the things that was was happening for you was kind of um the, like you had been working hard to to like like you know, like really like align your whole being with like you know, like non-suffering kinds of possibility spaces and like you know like like generating that for yourself generating that for others and and like um and you were you were feeling like that was that that was working um but then like you know various elements of it kind of crashed and burned and like so <clears throat> like that kind of kind of generated a lot of like like disappointment and like <clears throat> uh, yeah just like feeling of like like you know that like you know, you were you were doing what seemed to be indicated to you as like the appropriate thing to do if you wanted to like you know live a non-suffering oriented life and like so why the fuck are you getting this? Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. that's this is true. This is true. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and and like I mean, I. I feel like that's that's fundamentally because like it, you know the whole exercise is not ever meant to be just one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the local maxima tweet in particular felt like it made sense of certain things for me. It's like oh, like yes, that was a local maxima, yeah. and these things are good. Like that was good, and like the yeah. universe is not trying to help yeah. you hold on to that. It's like there's yes. <laughs> and even that there might be there might be better things that are. Yeah available but you have to like cra you know crash and burn away from that in order to get to that uh yeah. which yeah um hmm. what what so we were just talking just now about like my own phenomenological bumping into of this darkness what you know and, and earlier we we're sort of talking about it almost like theologically or philosophically what yeah. what is your own phenomenological internal brush with darkness what what is it like for you kind of on a personal psychological phenomenological level um 
Hmm. I'm thinking, thinking kind of kind of historically, like, like it, it has a lot in common with with the kind of, of experience that I was just like describing for you of like um, kind of just like running running into ways that the thing that appears you know, good and pleasant and, and you know, like, uh, like, yeah, why, why wouldn't you want things to, to, to be this way? Um, is like ineffective, um, punished. Uh, I guess, you know, uh, A lot of my engagement with with you know, what would reasonably be called darkness is driven by trying to uh, cope with uh, Moloch in the in the sense of uh, uh, Scott Alexander's essay meditations on Moloch the uh, the the ways in which uh, you know. Doing the thing that is like uh, apparently good is, you know, turns out poorly or, uh, you know, is, you know, sabotages itself. So on. Um, and a lot of the, a lot of the time, like, <clears throat> I'm, I'm driven by frustration with the appearance of good and light and, you know, niceness and blah, 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 uh, being a cover for various kinds of horror that are being continually swept under the rug. Um, like in a lot of ways, I feel like it's preferable to like, establish horror as a baseline expectation and then build a little bit of good and light out of that uh like where it's legitimate and reliable instead of you know pretending everything is all bunnies and light and then like it turns out the bunnies are you know carnivorous vampire bunnies and the light is going to give you cancer I don't have it handy, but that reminds me of the tweet that you wrote about, um, uh, and, I, and the, the particular phrasing of it is quite interesting, but basically like if you were told that like hor horror was the basis of the universe and that like so, something like uh, the more you accorded yourself with that, like the better, uh, it, it, you recall yeah, what you're talking about? Yeah, that was, that was, that was something like, um, you know, if, if you, you know, if you're told that, uh, uh, human comprehension of the universe is limited by the human capacity to uh, tolerate uh, cosmic horror, then obviously if you wanted to understand the universe, what you should be doing is developing your, your taste for cosmic horror. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the question then. Uh, what, so there could be a level where like you are the voice of the universe and you're telling me that and I should uh, just take your advice here what what um how to put this if instead so that that's an exercise i could go and do in my own time the person listening to this could go and do in their own time but what 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 sort of prompts that being a thing you've done in your own life like like obviously i i assume maybe incorrectly that no one literally came to you and told you that but like what is what generated that kind of an experience for you um, I mean, you know, there, there are various, uh, you know, cultural messages uh, to, to be found uh, uh, along those lines. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, <clears throat> um, I mean, you know, the, the whole At My Kafa thing there is like, you know, there's a very strong cosmic horror element to that. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. There's something about the framing of the tweet that I'm getting sort of tripped up on. I, I, I tend to be very literal minded. And of course, these ideas are, are quite dense, but it's like, oh, imagine someone came to you and told you this. And so I can imagine you coming to me and telling <laughs> yeah. me this. I mean, that's what the tweet is. But like, um, I don't know, like, we're, like, if you read something like Lovecraft or I, I don't know, maybe Philip K. Dick is like that. I, I didn't read him, but like, is that kind of your experience right. of reading those books or? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a, that's a significant element. Like there's that, that uh, you know, famous uh, Lovecraft quote about uh, the, you know, kindest thing in the universe being the in incapacity of the human mind to correlate all its contents. Mm. And like, you know, that, that, you know, that definitely like rings true uh, in, in a significant way. And like, I guess, you know, I, I, I felt that, uh, you know, confirmed in little ways, like anytime, like I'm trying to like, like figure out like some phenomenon in like, you know, existence, you know, human sociality or whatever uh, that is like, you know, not making sense to me. And like, I, you know, when I, when I chew on it, eventually, like I find a way in which it makes sense. And it's a way that like, was not visible to, to me before because it was fucking unpleasant for it to be visible. Mm -hmm. uh, like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, there's, there's another, you know, thing where like, um, yeah, like I didn't understand what was going on because, you know, it was, it, you know, wouldn't have fucking made me happy to understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've, I guess I've, I've uh, felt that to be a fairly consistent, uh, you know, pattern of, yeah, frequently the the ways things work are obscured largely by you know the stories telling us that they work a different way that we maintain for ourselves in order to like try and like not be immersed in horror all the time. Hmm. What is when you're chewing on these questions, like what is that like? Like how does one go about chewing on these questions or thinking about them? Like the 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 kind of like it yeah, it seems like some a cross between like philosophical inquiry and sort of like I don't know, like koan like inquiry or something like that. But what's your experience of it and how does one go about doing that? Um, I think like the main thing is just is like <coughs> Like, like it's an induction exercise where I'm like, uh, you know, like, okay, like I've got like, you know, X, Y, and Z phenomena. Um, and like, you know, it doesn't make sense to me that, you know, they would be following from each other. Um, so I'm, I'm basically trying to like generate, you know, different like perspectives, different like uh, ways of, of looking at things, um, and, you know, looking for one that, makes the observed data make sense um and like that's kind of hey it's kind of you know it's kind of fun in a way because it's it's fundamentally a generative creative exercise but you know it's also pretty fucking hard um you know i find that like any kind of training i can do for facilitating lateral thinking uh is is helpful that way I'm reminded of your tweet that says, um, there are many things that appear bad, but are actually good, mostly in second and third order effects that you can't explain to children or idiots. When resources <laughs> are scarce, you can just pretend there's nothing to be done about them, but abundance will fuck you up real good. Um, I, I imagine that that is the kind of thing that you would have uh, discovered from this kind of inquiry. What What are some examples of that that you can say in this recording? <laughs> yeah, 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 like you know, I'm 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 certain I was being uh, meta about that because uh, talking about the object level things would get me in fucking trouble. Uh -huh. I, I don't actually remember what I had in mind. Uh -huh. I so convenient uh, subtweeting. Yeah, you could just sort of yeah. forget. <laughs> um, shit. Um, Hmm. Hmm. What, what, what might be an example of that? Okay. So here, here's, here's one I'll give, I'll, 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 I'll throw you a ball and you can see what you okay. can do with it. It's like, uh, th there are people that are starving, for example. And we also, I mean, I don't know enough about this to say for sure, but I hear that like food is actually a pretty solvable problem and yet we don't solve it. 
uh, that like there's literally enough food that we could feed people. That let, let's just accept that that might be true for the sake of this conversation. I I I don't have a fact checker, so uh, yeah. alas, this is a low budget production here. Sorry, folks. Uh, <laughs> let's, so let's just in, introduce that as a plausible fact. What what if that if that were true? What would that say about the universe? Or like how, how does that sort of fit into these things? Right. Um... Because on well, the I mean, first what, order, what like that, that seems bad, right? Like, oh no, yeah. people are hungry. Well, I, and I and, and what, that, what that makes me think of is is the kind of of, of phenomenon um, where like uh, <clears throat> we we like like in the eighties we respond to that like okay you know we've got you know uh, big you know programs around like okay there's famine in Africa we need to to do something and we, and so we you know buy giant containers of food and we send them to Africa. And meanwhile, like because there's a famine in Africa, like local farming has been recovering because people will pay a lot of fucking money for, for food. Because you know, in the in the so like farming is heavily incentivized. And then, you know, and then the big ships full of food from America come. And you know, these are immediately, you know, control of the these immediately passes to the warlords who control the ports that the food is arriving at. Um, and to the extent that they're distributed, it annihilates the local farming that's been recovering because you know it now has no market again. Um, and like you know, so so like, you know, I mean, th this is kind of going like so it's, it's slightly the inverse direction of the thing where like you know there's something that you know we're, we're, we think is good, we're told is good, and we're actually like fucking up hideously. Um, <laughs> um, so you know, like. I, I mean, I, and I guess like the the original construction there would would you know be some something to do with it, like um, you know that that like the 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 starvation is generating the incentive for you know the the farming to to be developed, um, and like you know it's it's you know doing something something good that way uh, in that like you know we're, it's it's developing actual infrastructure for people's needs to be met on an ongoing basis. Um, as opposed to, you know, the, uh, the American aid, which is, uh, like, just fucking shit up. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and obviously it's possible for there to be smarter forms of aid that do things that, like, involve, uh, like, Im improving the ability of that, that farming to get rolling and so forth. Um, mm -hmm. but, like, if we just do the, the, the knee-jerk thing, uh, then we, you know, we don't do that. Are there any other examples of things that might, I mean, uh, that of the actual thing, not the inverse thing, that it would appear bad, but are actually good in second or third order effects? Um, hmm, hmm. I mean, uh, one that one that apparently has has become salient in the last thirty years is like kids playing in dirt. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like you know we've got this whole crop of parents who like you know are you know, like just trying to keep their kids clean all the time and their kids are developing like autoimmune disorders and and like weak immune systems because you know they're not getting hormetic exposure to like just like normal like normal pathogen loads for, right. for humans throughout their evolutionary history um and that, that one's low-hanging fruit that way mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I imagine I imagine there's like a, an intensity dial here of like that's pretty low, and then we could turn it up. But yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Okay, that's helpful. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Well, I, it occurs to me. I mean, the poor listener that has to listen to this uh, is is very hopefully bearing with me coming at this from so many different angles because it, it's like there there are very central questions I'm trying to ask you, but. This this sort of uh, corpus of tweets that you've developed is very <laughs> very complex and intricate. So I'm doing my best here, listener. I'm trying. Uh, let me come at this from a very different angle. Um, what? So one of the interactions we had recently was about. I, I had this thread about how I'm the sort of alluding to this parts work that I'm doing, and one of the sort of like themes is what I've been referring to as darkness. And uh, I said that there's also this light. And I said, I can see both ways, but not at the same time. I can speak, 
from both perspectives, but not at the same time. And then you replied, uh, referring to uh, the Peter Watts novel, I believe, Echopraxia, is that it? Blindsight is the first one. Blindsight is the first one, yes. Yeah. Um, thinking about how Peter Watts vampires can see both perspectives of a Necker cube at the same time, and you included the Necker cube, which is the, the sort mm -hmm. of um, cube that you can see like a front as the left or the front as the right. And in the novel, the vampires are able to see them at the same time. And um, <clears throat> And then I was like, okay, how, how, how do I do that? Like, please tell me, yeah, because yeah. this is the thing I need to do. And then you said, try defocusing your consciousness, like you're letting awareness streams diverge and lightly knitting them back together. Um, I still, yeah, I, so I'm still where I was when I said that, like, I right. can, I can voice the light voice, which is sort of happening now on the podcast. And then there's also this dark voice that I can tap into that's not present right now. Uh, is it strictly voicing that's the issue? Um, like, can you see the pure land in the charlotte ground at the same time? Hmm. Interesting. I'm not sure. I mean, a lot of a lot of it has just been exceedingly verbal. Like, yeah. Um, you know, I'm speaking to you right now, and then I write down a lot of thoughts. I think. Uh, one second. Um, the. Yeah, my experience of this sort of thing is very verbal, and then and then I guess I would say there's emotional quality, but I don't know about visual. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess I guess the simple question before we get to the the hard question is like, what's what's your experience of this sort of thing? Well, I mean, I I you know. I have not been successful with the, you know, both perspectives on the, the Necker cube thing. The, the know, literal ne Necker apparently. cube, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because actually, well, I could be fooling myself, but it seems like I can do that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe I'm wrong. I'd have to look at, but in any case, I'm, I'm not literally interested in the geometrical thing. I'm yeah, interested. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is like, this is, this is like an acute psychological thing for me that I'm like, oh, trying to give birth to this new way of seeing in which it is possible to do simultaneously. And it seems like I will get there, but I'm not there yet. Yeah, I think, you know, in, in terms of, you know, seeing the the pure land and the charnel ground at the, the same time, um, like, what, to, to the extent that that seems to, to work for me, it's mostly kind of a, kind of a fractal structure sort of thing where like, you know, like taking a, like a, like a, a Charnel Brown basis and then like, you know, because tools appear in the Charnel Ground, we, if we care to, can uh, essentially create pockets of, of pure land out of it. Um, and, you know, then sometimes pockets of charnel ground reoccur within there and so forth. Right? Um, you know, the, and the, and there fundamentally isn't really a, you know, a, a separation between those or anything but like it's easier to 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 see them both together um in that kind of like cyclically embedded sort of view i find hmm. can you be a little bit more specific about an actual experience you might have of this sort of thing Well, I, I, I feel like developing intimate relationships is like kind of fundamentally uh, an exercise in this kind of kind of thing where you're 
I mean, I definitely view the, the, the broader space of, of like, you know, dating and mating dynamics as, you know, extremely charnel in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's a, it's a bad fucking scene. And, you know, if you're looking to, to link up with people, you're, you know, starting from there and like trying to find people that you can, you know, build a, a sacred space with that is you know, sustaining and, and nurturing to each other, uh, mm -hmm. like without ever really being separate from the, the, the broader context that is, you know, trying to eat everybody's face all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems like yeah. a pretty straightforward example. That's helpful. I think um, the, the sort of harder question then is, yeah, basically, how, how do I do this? Like you, you gave you gave specific instructions, which were helpful, extremely compassionate. <laughs> and yet, uh, you know, try defocusing your consciousness, like you're letting awareness streams diverge, and lightly knitting them back together. Um, I, yeah, I don't. Um, I don't know how uh, to do that. Okay. I don't know how to do that. I, I mean, experientially, so experientially, it, it has felt often like there are two people inside of me. And, and, you know, I've done a bunch of parts work. So there's, 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 there's all kinds of people in there, but like these feel, um, oh gosh, I know the tone is just so different. And like um, the, the content and the mood and the emotions are just very different. And it's, it's as if, um, I'm in a room with two just like very different personalities. And uh, one of them, of course, is more prominent and I sort of like am more recognizable in daily life. And, uh, but like, I, don't, I have no idea how to square those people together um, or the things that they talk about or uh, what they, how they see the world. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can, I can kind of see that. Or like, yeah, you know, they they just kind of talk past each other and like have little patience for you know what's going on with you, you know, like each other's kind of concerns or priorities. Something like that. There's, there's, I would say there's like some increased trust. Like I've really been able to see how, just experientially, it's like the darkness is protecting me and. Uh, for example, like a lot of it has been about people and whether I can trust people or not. And I used to, I've had, I've had a lot of like trust issues recently and like, who can I trust when and why? Whereas right. like before I might've just been like very trusting and very open and um, like naively trusting. And so now it's like, oh, well, can I really trust this person? And uh, should I tell this person this thing or ask them to do this or what, whatever it is? Um, and so... I can see that, like, from the light perspective, I can see the value of that. Oh, like, oh, yeah, people are complex, and this will help me discern if they're trusting. Or, like, oh, um, there is, in fact, suffering, for example. So it's good that the darkness is in contact with that. But um, the actual, like, object level thoughts or words that come from them are just very different. I mean, the light and love personality is very sweet and kind and wants to, like, help people and, like, live a good life. And, the dark one like swears a lot and is like um, kind of complainy and uh, focused on um, yeah like that there is suffering in the world and is like fixated on certain topics like death or pain or um, distrust or confusion that uh, it's like oh like there's this beautiful rainbow and then there's this like dark black and white picture and they're just like sitting on a table next to each other it's like oh why yeah. does this fit together <clears throat> Uh, well, one thing that comes to mind is to just um, for like kind of like the the like I don't know, fractal integration kind of thing that I'm talking about is like like with the the trust thing. Um, like I don't I don't know if it's if it's how how it works for you, but like um, one one thing that I've I've seen with people is like you know if they're coming out of the the like you know very like freely trusting mode into like you know trying to to you know protect themselves better um, the like the the contextual like and like limited forms of trust like like it almost has 
just the 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 you know the emotional tone of not trusting um that it's like if i you know if, if my my trust for you has to be limited to this context then like it's really like i don't actually trust you mm -hmm. um and like I would, I would suggest trying to like you know let the contextual trust be trust like you know okay like you know yeah it's it's about this thing and like i don't necessarily trust you for this other purpose over here but in the space that i that i do trust you i do trust you like that is like you know and like let that have the the sort of of like you know sustaining you know feeling that that like the the broader trust mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah there was a there was a time where like i was noticing not it, was, it basically felt like trust issues and I wasn't trusting almost anyone with almost anything. And um, then I realized that, well, that, that was just like an extreme overreaction that's not needed. And it's more like, um, now, now it almost feels like, like, like there's like flags that go up of like, oh, this might be a situation where I shouldn't trust this person. Like, let me check what the evidence is of whether they're trustworthy or not. And like, or maybe decide to just be somewhat cautious, but like, it doesn't mean they are not trustworthy in every respect whatsoever or something um uh yeah i think i think the trust one in particular hasn't been as painful or confusing of late it's more yeah. uh i i think it's it's not even like if i'm in one of them it's like totally fine it's like i i'm, I'm totally at home in either of them they're fine but it's like how they the, the like duality of them is very confusing and painful for me Okay, gotcha. Hmm. Yeah, I just kind of trying to think about it. Like, how how would uh, how would one integrate those sorts of things? Um, hmm. It's interesting, maybe maybe a way to ask as well as like the instructions you gave about defocusing your consciousness and like knitting them back together after they diverge. I could imagine you saying something slightly different, like um, go between them as rapidly as possible and then like see if <laughs> that can become the same thing. Does, does that seem like it would be good advice or terrible advice? I think it would at least be an interesting exercise. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, because it, like it sounds like you know probably even like on a on a structural level that like there's a lot of a lot of separation between between the you know the parts of you that you know operate in each of these ways and like yeah just like you know activating them you know just just temporarily proximate to each other like. You know, might might do some useful things in in terms of like you know getting them on better better speaking terms mm. um i could see that yeah it occurs to me as you say that that in some ways it might be sort of being reinforced by the fact that i'm using twitter to like work on this where it's like there's like literal <laughs> separate accounts and yeah yeah that's, that's, that's probably driving in a more disintegrative direction <laughs> yeah so, yeah so. It's, it's something i've tried recently with interesting results is like um because especially on main i have like very strong speech requirements I, I try on the other one there's been a couple of tweets recently like oh i don't know if this is i don't know if this one on the alt but um anyway overall i like try to have like pretty strong standards for my speech and um typically yeah with the main it's just like oh just the light voice just this mm -hmm. personality but then i've like tried saying some things on main that feel like they're from the other voice but are still like the actual words are uh like check out with my speech yeah. constraints basically um it's, it's interesting basically like I, i'm the insights are valuable and i'm glad they're there for me for the record um i, I find such value in that of like having tweets be searchable in general but like mm -hmm. the response is very like like it is like almost like I, I get it's it's like if it, if I was saying something to the room is almost like oh oh you said that like ooh. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. you know so like you know even though you're you're you know keeping the 
the form of the speech, like you know the 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 vibe disjunction of the content is is coming across. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely, and and like people like might not be following me for that reason, which is, is, I mean, like on an ultimate level, like I'm like, you know, my account is my own, almost like my own performance art piece. And like, I don't like, that's up to you whether you want to follow that or not. But like yeah. the thing that um, I, I can't, I can't over index on like my concept of what other people want from my Twitter accounts. Like, no, sure. this is mine. But um, there is something there of like, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, if people have, have like, you know, come to you because they, you know, want a particular thing and, like, you know, they're getting something of that, that like, you know, all things being equal, I'm sure you'd prefer they continue to get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've tried, I don't know, like, even recently just, like, tried, like, swearing as well a bit more on main like i didn't i, I th i'm pretty sure for a long time i just like didn't swear on main but i was like no i think this is this is good or um talking about certain topics that i might not otherwise so i think that's that's probably a one way to like do it and it almost made i haven't tried like having the sort of like light and love thing on the dark account like like 10 mm. percent of that so I, I might try that as well but yeah yeah i mean that 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 sounds productive like you know uh you know if you're like yeah, how do you how do you you know express something that like you know is coming from the the light and love side that like you know to be true, um, and like you know how does how does that come through the the darkness? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. It's so interesting having like I have like complete confidence that over time this will integrate and it'll be like almost like I, I arrive at a solution where I'm like, oh, this is how it all fits together. But like in the moment, it's like, oh, I have no, like, what is the solution to this? But it is not obvious at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Like, Does the does you know does dark passion respect light passion? Hmm. You know, it's interesting because um hmm. the the sort of way we've been talking about it is, is sort of like overly simplistic because these are sort of sure. the like two main forces that are like relevant to our conversation, but there's like other other personalities, shall we say, and the like actual working model that I have in my head is like there's some very interesting like alliances and enmities and almost all of the like um and, and sometimes they're like one directional like yeah. and so I'm trying I'm trying to I think uh oh that's interesting I think maybe the light one respects the dark more than the dark respects the light maybe that is a thing yeah yeah Because I think the light one can see a lot of value from the dark one, uh, which is in, as, especially as it's been like growing and uh, emerging, which I think is also related to this conversation. Because I, I I think your tweets just like didn't make sense to me for a long time, and or I didn't follow you because it was like I don't I don't know what this guy is about, you know, like slash he must be bad or something. I don't <laughs> I don't know if I ever consciously thought that, but I'm sure that was on some level. And it's like now I can like it it is is incredibly easy for me to see like oh you are a for, for me, the way I experience and perceive you, you are a good person that is like of benefit in the world because for various things. Um, so the light can see the value of the dark, but I, yeah, I, I suspect the dark is like, what is this light? Cause it's like, I don't know if there's suffering, it's just like, um, yeah, again, it's this like complainy thing of like, let's just get out. Like I, I'm more, I'm more on the first side of your tweet of like, oh, let's just get out, get out of this. Yeah. This is in a like almost like Theravadan Buddhist way of like, oh, like, no, like, no, thank you, bad deal, raw deal, hell right. no, samsara man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, it sounds like it might be, you know, useful for, I don't know, for, for, you know, for Dark Tashin to, you know, 
look for the look for you know potential value and and you know where he comes from. Yes, it's it occurs to me that um, you know there's sort of two levels that we've been having this conversation so far of like Tashin asked chaos about his intricate theology <laughs> slash philosophy slash cosmology uh, and like dives into that and then there's the like yeah I think for me underlying level of like I am having this psychological situation that I'm like trying to resolve and I think the reason th th those those might seem apparently different but I'm pretty sure either the shape or content of the like cosmology that you're putting forward like in there there's an answer to the psychological question is is how I experience it and so it's like well yeah. I don't yet understand the things you're talking about so I can't find the answer quite yet yeah I mean one like readily readily available way I think to to find uh value in in you know the kinds of experiences that that you know are home to 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 dark passion is is um I think is it, is it uh, Khalil Gibran with the thing about uh, talking about how uh, pain carves out the the space that can be filled by joy? Like mm -hmm. I've you know I've seen a lot of evidence that he's on point with that. Mm -hmm. um, like I I think that uh, you know one one thing that uh, you know suffering or at least pain uh, can can do for you is to uh, literally expand your emotional capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, and like you know give you give you space to uh experience you know greater levels of joy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yes what this i want to come back to a specific point in your cosmology shall we call it that mm -hmm. feels like a bridge between these points namely the Bodhisattva vows. You have mm. a few a few tweets about this that I'll read. Commented down. on that, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, um, uh, this is a reply. Bodhisattva is just another word for sucker. Uh, uh, the Bodhisattva I've just been being a jerk there. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the Bodhisattva's vows are a vaccine for Atmite Katva. Uh, yeah. That that. Uh, um, you know, coming from you know what I was what I was talking about, like you know my you know at my katva experience there, um, what what that makes the the bodhisattva's vows uh, appear as to me is that like you're convincing people to promise to do something that they don't actually have a choice about in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, and the and it's and it's basically and it's an inoculation against the possibility that they will actually like perceive what is what Atman is doing and is going to be doing, hmm. um, and like you know without without the inoculation like you know they you know the you know they'll just have the like the raw cosmic horror of it, um, you know with with having taken the vows like you know you're you know. What it turns out you're going to be doing is something you already promised to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, like maybe that takes the edge off of it a little. So and then, the thing know, that I, you already promised to do is, um, like, I mean, proceed through everything essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone does that, or just the bodhisattvas. Yeah. Everyone does that. Yeah. 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 The, the bodhisattva's vow doesn't change anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Interesting. Um, what you, you alluded to this earlier, and this feels relevant now, like what, how, how do you see reincarnation and what are the sort of various problems that you see with other ways that it has been presented? Um, yeah, I, I see it as, you know, fundamentally just the, you know, I, I think the, the count of distinct experiential points of view is one. Um, and that that's being, you know, it's like a, you know, a, a thread, you know, being stitched back through everything, uh, you know, through the understructure of the universe. Um, and so like, you know, which means everybody who, you know, 
thinks that they are some other given person reincarnated is correct. Um, so, you know, good for them. <laughs> Uh, but that like, you know, like, like people, and, and this is, this is, you know, fundamental to Anata that people want like reincarnation to be a continuation of their present, like thoughts, emotions, feelings, values, um, like consciousness. Um, well, you know, I mean, you can have the consciousness part, but only if you're not loading more stuff into there than actually belongs. Um, you know, their, their experiences, their memories and so on. Um, like that is, you know, none, none of that is coming along for the ride. Um, like to the extent that, you know, something that is recognizable to you as you, um, you know, continues, it's like through the mechanisms of the world. Like if you can, you know, if you can spread your Dharma, if you can, uh, like relate the, you know, mechanics of existence that are characteristic to you. Uh, in a way that allows other people to absorb them and and you know, like like live in a similar fashion, um, like that's about as as close as you're going to get to like the you know forms of reincarnation that you know people want it to be. Mm. Um, and I mean, in the happenstance that like you know somebody else uh, like essentially has, you know, the same Dharma as you, and, you know, has the, the, the same kinds of, of internal mechanics, you know, between the one thing and the other, like, you know, same experiential point of view, like, that's, like, essentially, you know, in you again, um, but, like, also, you know, the, the identity there is, like, if you drill down precisely enough there'll be you know differences but... hmm. it's, you know, it's just one of those things where uh if you look at things abstractly enough then everything is the same and if you look at it specifically enough then it's everything is different hmm. Hmm. out of curiosity have you seen uh or read the egg yes what do you make of yeah. that I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you know, it, it, it's a lot like what I'm saying, um, you know, uh, you know, slightly, uh, you know, dressed up in, in, you know, uh, accessible story elements, but like, you know, it's directionally on point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What feels dressed up about it? Oh, just that like, like we have like, you know, coherent speaking individuals, like, you know, explicating things about uh -huh. this kind of situation. I, I, you know, I don't think there are any of those. Yes. You know, I, 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 I would, I would love to talk to the person that wrote that. Uh, I have no idea what they were doing when they wrote it. I could imagine at least two different things. Uh, but for me, when I, read or there's this nice animation of it that I watched that was quite impactful for me. Uh, it, how to put it? Intellectually, it's very dissatisfying and emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, it just feels very true. It's like this, there is something very true about this. Even if I, I like, I really wish that there was like a proof of it or that was like more satisfyingly presented or that I could like prove it to someone else or something. But, it, mm -hmm. but when I watch it, I'm like, this seems, this seems, yes, this is true. And one, one, one thing I've been thinking about it recently is like, it, it sort of reframes the golden rule less as like a, like mm -hmm. nicety or something. It's like, no, you literally are other people. So you should treat them well because you uh -huh. are them. <laughs> yeah. The, like whatever experience you generate from for other people is a is an experience that you know for sufficiently non you values of you you are going to experience yes yeah yes yeah so that's you know you know worth uh um keeping in mind when one is uh you know considering the the, the ethics implied there but like you know it also means that like you know an an action that like you're willing to live with the the you know experiencing the consequences of like you know is not counterindicated there 
And so you're saying that sort of all checks out with the experience that you had and the sort of like insight that you had. Yeah, um, you know, I'm not quite sure if it like in every specific of what the the story sure, is all about. Sure, sure. Um, because uh, you know, but like you know, yeah, Jen, basically, you know, seems like the same kind of thing. I was very, very reminded of it when you were describing it, and I, I, I don't know. I've been, we've been corresponding for a while, and I've been wanting to ask you what you, what you thought of that for a while. But I think, I, I think it's like, in a weird way, it might be one of the most fundamental things to how I see the world these days, like that, and maybe peace pilgrim even, which is more, more than like Buddhism or like Buddhism, sort of like a operational level thing. But this is like, yeah, I don't. I really, I'm, I'm overdue to like. I promised that someone that I would write something about the metaphysical views that I have kicking around at this point because I, I myself am confused how, how all this fits <laughs> together. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Um, and then, I mean, you know, not for nothing, but that's you know part of, like you know not even not necessarily a major part, but part of why um, I'm annoyed with Fish uh, uh, Buk, the the. Uh, the monk who set himself on fire in mm. Vietnam because I'm yeah, I'm just like fuck you buddy <laughs> <laughs> because you'll have to do that uh-huh yeah uh-huh 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 fair fair yeah. fair yeah and he, and it's you know from from that perspective which well, like I would you know be surprised if he didn't share like he's he's basically like like using that as like you know like, like sort of blackmail like a mm -hmm. like a lever to like be like you know, like hey you know y'all need to, to stop doing all this stuff and like you know like here's your your fucking punishment for you know not doing what the fuck i want and like mm -hmm. yeah. that 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 the that for me that story and it sounds like the insight that you had just really warps so many things like daily interactions mm -hmm. of like um it, it's just like touched every, every like every interaction that i've had since i watched that basically yep yeah it's you know transforms a lot yes uh some part of me is very unsettled by how deeply it has worked its way into my psyche because i have i have no i like I mean, especially be, maybe it's because I like was presented with it through like a fictional means and like, I don't know, it sounds like I'm, I'm I, from the way you describe it, it sounds like you sort of had a direct deep insight into this sort of thing being true for yourself. Yeah, I kind uh, of just slammed my face into it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I mean, and in a certain way, maybe it's nicer just to like be like, oh, I will watch a 10 minute clip on YouTube and then your life will never be the same. <laughs> like that's that's a pretty easy way for that medicine to go down. Uh, but it, it lacks like either direct insight or like, oh man, I really would actually like like um, like an ontological proof of the thing. Um, yeah. You know, I really admire people that try to have like ontological proofs for the existence of God, for example. <laughs> I think that's yeah. a valiant effort, you know, like it is it is very dissatisfying when you actually read their arguments, but I, I, I applaud them. <laughs> You know, you tried, buddy. You tried. Like that that <laughs> one actually looked pretty good. Like I still don't buy it, but that's a good one. Nice yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I would love that for this sort of thing, but failing it, you know, actually I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere in the Buddhist canon there was something to this effect, but I haven't come across it. Well, I mean, it, it you know, I haven't I haven't done the legwork on it or anything, but it seems like um, you know, the the uh you know. What was it? The uh, what are they? What are they called? The, the strong free will hypothesis, hmm. or, um, that like winds up like demonstrating literally nothing about free will, um, <laughs> because like it's just like literally all, all the guy is trying to do is uh, demonstrate that if humans have free will, which he's waving the question of, then uh, fundamental particles uh, have free will, hmm. um, and like you know. It seems like you could just swap in consciousness for that. Hmm. Hmm. Do you know who you're referring to that makes this argument? Uh, who's that? Uh, Conway. Um, free free will theorem. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, he worked up a couple of versions. The the strong one is uh, uh, a, a variant, but. Hmm. Uh, yeah, strong will theorem was a 2009 paper. Um, yeah, he uh, 
I don't know, worked up a, a, a slightly convincing argument for the, um, like, you know, basically like, like the devolution of uh, uh, metaphysical properties from, you know, humans to the, you know, their constituent particles. Hmm. Interesting. So, you know, um, you know, free will is, you know, one fucking thing, but, um, you know, consciousness, well, you know, I'm like, I'm confident in having that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we've covered quite a bit of ground. Uh, there's much more we could dive into, of course, but I wonder, I want to like give you some reins over the conversation. Is there anything that you'd like to talk about or dive deeper into, whether about your tweets or some of these themes or anything else? Hmm. hmm. I mean, I mean, nothing, nothing's leaping to mind. I'm, I'm comfortable going where, where you're feeling like going. Hmm. Well, one, one, uh, one other thing that's definitely still itching at me is sort of related to this Bodhisattva vow question. Um, I wonder, I think you have a few takes on Meta, actually. There's one about rocks, which I quite like. I think you were like, I, do, do you remember what I'm talking about? I don't have it. No, what did I say about rocks? So, so I, as I recall it, and forgive me that I don't have a recall, but something like uh, you, it's a, the, the, the simple English version of it is you should send meta to rocks too. Uh, oh, which, yeah, yeah. Which I am all yeah, about, I mean, but yeah. Yeah, just, be, you know, um, if like, because, you know, it, it doesn't make any particular sense to me that like, you know, um, that Atman would be proceeding through like one human being in aggregate and nothing else like you know the the devolution to fundamental particles seems like critical and and like um i've, I've apparently uh like triggered a major episode of kriyas and somebody by suggesting to them that uh you know they should reach out to the other octillions of uh uh streams of consciousness uh, they're sharing their body with uh, so like that was you know that was fun interesting um <laughs> But that, like, yeah, like, you know, if consciousness that has the existence of an experiential point of view is a, you know, fundamental property of matter, then, you know, fucking rocks have it. Um, mm -hmm. And like, you know, they're probably having a very chill time. Um, you know? <laughs> Seems pretty like, good. I don't know. Yeah, like, I mean, in, I in general, next time around. yeah, in, in general, I think probably like consciousness without memory is like always very chill. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> mm -hmm. It, yeah, but uh, but yeah, and like you know, I mean, you know, if you're sending meta to you know to whatever, like you know, I'm sure the rocks can use some too. Mm -hmm. You had another another, and so I'm I'm very sympathetic to that one, but you had another one that I think is um, not only unusual but also subtle, which is okay, no shade, but the degree of meta and ahimsa where you're allowing parasitic feeders to feast on you is too goddamn much meta and ahimsa. <laughs> I fully yeah. support it, but like any other perspective, exercise in unhealthy excess, but I do not support it being held up as ultimate virtue. So I guess the question between that and, and the rock one is like, do you have any um, thoughts about metta and the Brahma Viharas that fr like from your perspective might not be obvious to other presentations about it? <laughs> uh, yeah, it seems like, like, yeah, like I think you know, I, I, di I didn't want to be mean to, to charge AI or anything, but like, you know, the, the picture where he's like letting the mosquitoes uh, uh, feed on his hand is like, like, you know, it's, it's, I, you know, I, I think uh, like fundamentally okay to like pursue your interests and like be an organism that is like, trying to do things and live and grow and stuff. And like, you know, uh, and not letting parasites eat you, um, it, I, I understand to be a, <laughs> uh, uh, a valid form of that. Um, That's interesting. Cause I, I thought, I'm, I'm glad you clarified because I thought that you were referring to uh, like entities or non-material. Uh, oh no, I was talking about fucking mosquitoes. Because <laughs> it's a, a, as I understand it, it's like 
like de- like in the in the Buddhist cosmology anyway, like uh, like devas, for example, can eat eat your meta, you know, uh, and feed on. So I was wondering if you're saying, oh, that's that's too much meta or something like that. But no, you're talking about oh, no, mosquitoes. No, like, no, I mean, if if, if like you know, if, if anything is consuming, like, something that you're, like, giving freely, um, then that's great, and, like, I guess, you know, I guess if, if your blood is your meta, and you're, you know, pleased to, to let whatever cares to have it eat it, then, like, you know, good for you, um, I don't know that it is, I, that I particularly approve of one promoting that as something, like, you know, amazingly virtuous that everybody should be doing. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, I see. I mean, I would have thought that would be pretty in line with what you're saying of like, oh, you will also be the mosquito. And therefore, when you were the mosquito, you would want to uh, eat. And, they, and and yeah, and that's, that's, that's valid. Um, but like, you know, just because I fucking want something doesn't mean I need to fucking have it. Uh-huh. You know, it's it's valid for me and the mosquito to strive against each other, regardless of you know, huh. our sharing of a, a point of view. We live in the same universe, but your conceptual and emotional, psychological understanding of it is very disorienting for me in this moment. <laughs> yes, there's some little little uh, Buddhist parable um, on this this topic that, uh, that I thought was was good. It was uh, a, I I can't seem to find it right now, but it was something about um, you know a uh, set of parents in some village somewhere um, coming to the the local monk. Uh, uh, upset because their uh, their their small son had uh, crushed the head of a snake that had uh, come into their into their their house, and the the monk uh, said to to give the boy a uh, a sweet rice cake, mm-hmm. and uh, that the basically that like you know the the snake gets to gets to live, but you get to have the boundaries of your house too. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. Well, here's here's maybe we'll go out with one last curveball, which is uh, I wonder if you have any thoughts about Star Wars and the Jedi and the Sith and that <laughs> cause that whole narrative arc. I mean, I've 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 said a few things uh, uh, about that from from time to time. Mm-hmm. Um, like, oh, let's see. Um, as someone, you know, from the Charnel ground, born in it, shaped by it, um, I uh, the the uh, Jedi elevation of like. only things that have, uh, you know, grown straight and unbowed uh, is an an irritation to me because like, you know, you you look at any Sith and, you know, they're they're fundamentally um, like something broken that has decided to to get get up and walk anyway. Um, And, you know, I'm sure it's self-serving of me, but that feels more noble to me. And like the the idea that uh, like only pure things are to be you know elevated and and uh, you know to to have a valid place is you know I'm 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 not a big fan of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, uh, so it isn't entirely displeasing to me that you know the. The Jedi got forced uh, balance brought to them. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. No, it, it is, you know, it, 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 it certainly seems strange that like they would have been so enthused about uh, a kid who was prophesied to bring balance to the Force when like, you know, there's like thousands of them and they're like in complete fucking dominance of the galaxy. Like, why would you want balance in that situation? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. But yeah, but I guess they got it. So you know. they did. Yeah, they got their balance. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Huh. Um, yeah, and and like the 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 Jedi code being all uh, like 
emotion is bad. We don't want to feel things. Blah, blah, blah. Um, like it's just like, it, um, uh, you, you might enjoy my, uh, my tweet where I did a little work integrating the, the Jedi code and the Sith creed. Um, what was it? Uh, Um, I'm struggling to remember how they go. Uh, there we go. I'll DM that to you. Can you read it uh, for me? Sure. Emotion, yet peace. Serenity, yet passion. Ignorance, yet knowledge. Harmony, yet strength. Chaos, yet power death yet victory hmm. 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 yeah i think when i'm reminded that like i think when i was a kid i was just like yeah jedi and then um yeah. naturally who wouldn't na be naturally yes yeah. and then i so sort of started to see some of the like both both the plot themes in the 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 story but also the sort of like philosophical limitations of that and then but it's like oh i don't i don't want it to just be like oh sith good actually because that seems incomplete yeah. too. Yeah, no, like, you know, the, the Sith Creed by itself is also like, you know, kind of crap. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, apparently the like extended universe slash fan construction of the, you know, kind of integration that I'm, I'm going for there is, is uh, referred to as Gray Jedi, which like is like the worst name and I hate it. So. Mm -hmm. And they've they've done some stuff in the the expanded universe where like apparently you know they they set up something where the the Jedi and the Sith both uh, sprang from a you know an older order called the, the like uh, G J E apostrophe D E A I I or something the, the huh. G -D um, and who had like you know fucking sensible philosophies. Or like, you know, like little G die girl comes to her dad talking about like, you know, some some uh like anger she was feeling and and you know, and her dad is talking about how like, you know, anger serves useful purposes, you know, it, it allows us to to you know act against you know things that are are uh threatening to us and that like interfere with our you know our well-being. But uh but if you get sucked into it and it becomes like your you know entire world, then it becomes, you know horribly destructive as well. like, like, wow, like, why has this level of basic sensibility been fucking lost? And uh -huh. uh -huh. yes, yes. Yeah. Huh. I don't even really like Star Wars that much anymore. But I used to love it. But it, it, it occurred to me just that I think that in a nice way, that's sort of like a um, crystallization of the kinds of themes that we've been discussing of just, uh, yeah, how does it how does all this fit together? So yeah. Uh, yeah, it's nice to hear hear your perspective about it. So, well, I really appreciate you taking the time to have this conversation. And uh, as I say, I really enjoyed our correspondence as well. And uh, thank you so much for your time and for your perspectives on these things. Sure. Uh, um, if you want me to go into some some more weird shit another time, I'll, yeah, I'm I'm up for it. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, friend. Thank you.